Hey everybody, it's Alex with Engineering Applied. In this video, I'll be showing you how to create a custom drawing template in Autodesk Inventor. If you want more easy to understand and practical content like this, made by an experienced engineer like myself, make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on any helpful content like this in the future. If you're looking for a specific function, check the description for timestamps. And if you don't find what you're looking for in this video, make sure you check out the other videos in my Autodesk Inventor series playlist because I know you'll find exactly what you need there. Let's get started. Okay, everybody, so here we are in our drawing file. And like I said in the intro, we're going to be covering how to create a custom drawing template. So we're going from the basic ANSI template in this particular case. So if I was to go up to new here, and I get this pop up here. I'm currently using the ANSI.DWG file format. Um, I usually prefer to use the .DWG because it communicates both with Autodesk Inventor and AutoCAD, okay? So um, I would suggest if you don't have a preference between either the .DWG or the .IDW, go with the .DWG. It is uh, compatible with AutoCAD. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the template. So this is the basic template and this is the way it starts out. We want to go from this to creating a custom template like this. So um, I have my custom company title block here and my table of revisions. Uh, and of course, you can add or take away things depending on your particular case. But like I said, we want to be able to create this template so that when we launch a new drawing, we don't have to redo the title block or anything. This automatically pops up like this. So first off, we need to go ahead and understand what Autodesk Inventor is looking for when we launch a new drawing file. So let's go ahead and take a step out to the home screen here. And if I were to click this drawing button here, so new drawing, it's going to launch a document based off of this file here called standard.dwg. Or if you're using a .idw file, it's going to use this particular file here. And so all we're doing is we're taking this standard.dwg, copying it, saving it as a different name, and then making our changes accordingly. Then when we're ready to launch a new drawing, we'll double click on our custom formatted file. So in my case, it's EA default for engineering applied default .dwg. Now we can also um, overwrite the standard.dwg with the new format to allow it to launch straight from this button here. And I'll show you how to do that towards the end of the video. I typically recommend uh, not doing that. Personally, I like to keep all of the original files as they were in case I need to go back and revert to the original setup. So um, it's just depends on your preference and we can take a look at that later. So the first thing we want to do is we want to open up our file explorer in Windows. And uh, I went ahead and already navigated to where we needed to be. So you want to go to this PC, your local disk. So this is the um, hard drive in which your operating system is saved on. Then you'll go to users, public, public documents, Autodesk, Inventor 2021, templates, and then your ENUS folder. Within this folder, this is where you get all of your basic templates. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this standard.dwg file as something else. So what I'll do is I will right click on that file, go to copy, and then I'll paste it in the same folder. And it's going to uh, just give it a hyphen copy at the end, just to let me know that this is a copied version of that original file. Let's go ahead and rename that to something else. So we'll just call it custom template. Okay, so now that we've got that renamed, we need to go back into Inventor and close it out and reopen it so that we can see it populated in that folder. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so we're now back in Autodesk Inventor. And if I go over to this advanced tab here, you'll notice I have my custom template.dwg file in this location. Now this is incredibly important and I want you to pay close attention. We don't want to launch this file, at least at this stage, from here, okay? We wanna either launch it from the file explorer window that we had open, so we can launch it from here, or we can use open navigate to this file in this location and launch it from there. Let me show you what happens when I launch it from here first. So I'll go ahead and double click on this and I'll just take a second to load. Okay, notice the name here at the top. It says custom template.dwg. We are now editing the source template file. Okay, now let's go back to the home page. We'll close this out. We won't save that at this time. Now let's launch it from here and see what happens. So I'll double click on that. Okay. 
And here at the top, it says drawing one. So it's indexing this as if I just launched a new drawing file, a basic drawing file. This is really important. If you make any changes here, it's as if you're taking the base template and you haven't made any changes to the actual template itself. So again, either launch it from your file explorer window within Windows, or you can go up to open and navigate to that same file location that we got to with file explorer earlier and double click on custom template.dwg. So if you launch it from here or from file explorer, you'll get your source template. And you'll know that because the name at the top matches your source template name in that folder. Now let's go ahead and make some changes to this template so that we can see how those changes are saved for later use. The first thing I want to do in this particular case is I want to resize this sheet. So I'll right click on sheet one, go down to edit sheet, and then I will change the size here to C. Okay. We also can change some other attributes about the page, um, such as the title block location and the orientation of the page itself. So now I'll click OK. Now let's go ahead and make some changes to our title block. One thing I'd like to note is that in this particular video, I will not be going into depth on how to create a custom title block. I do, however, have a specific video on that subject, and I encourage you to check it out because there's a lot of great information in there. Moving along here, we'll go up to the title block folder. We'll expand that. And as you can see here, we have two basic title blocks available to us. So the first thing we want to do is we want to open up the sheet here. Okay. We want to right click on this particular title block and let's go ahead and delete it off the sheet. So we get a nice clean space here. Now, depending on your preference, whether you like to go with a larger title block or a more condensed one, you can start with either one of these as a baseline if you like to do so. So what I'll go ahead and do is I'll use the large variant. I'm going to right click on this. I'm going to copy it. Okay. And then I'm going to paste it into this title blocks folder. And then let's rename this to something else. So what I'll do is I'll left click in this field and let's just call it custom title block. You can call it whatever you'd like, uh, but this is what I'm calling it for this video. So now what we want to do is right click on custom title block. We'll go to insert. Now we'll right click on custom title block again within this folder here, and we want to go to edit. Okay. So now it opens up the editing field for our title block. So let's go ahead and just change a couple things here. So let's say, for example, I want to remove this approved section. I can do that. I'll just delete that and uh, let's trim out a couple lines so I can make a space for a little message down here, something along the lines of uh, remove all burrs and break sharp edges, for example. And then I can go up here to the top and uh, let's go ahead and insert the company logo. So we'll go to image. We'll draw a little space in here for this image to be dropped into. And I'll just pick one of these logos here. All right. Now we can uh, enter some text here with my company name, for example. So I'll just do engineering applied. We'll hit OK. Of course, you can size it accordingly. So let's just do uh, 240 on that size. All right. And so you get the basic idea. So now that we finished changing our title block, let's go ahead and go to finish sketch and we'll click yes to save those edits to our custom title block. So now that we've clicked yes, you can see all of our changes have been saved. So the space that we cleared out here in the bottom is captured. And we also have our company logo and company name. Now let's go ahead and make some changes to our default border. So what we want to do is we want to expand sheet one here. So we open that up and we right click on default border, go to delete. OK, now go up to your borders folder, right click on default border, click on insert drawing border. And now we get a dialog box with a bunch of options for the styling of our border itself. I'd like to point out that in this video, I won't be covering the specifics of border creation. However, I do have a video on that specific subject, so I encourage you to go watch that if you want to learn more about that particular topic. So let's say, for example, I want to double the amount of horizontal zones here. So let's go ahead and enter a number eight into this box. So before we had four individual zones along the bottom and the top. Now we want eight. I'll leave everything else the same because I want it to have the standard text style, text layer, and so on and so forth. So I'll click OK. And now, as you can see here, we've doubled the number of horizontal zones on the page while maintaining the four vertical zones. So you can do all sorts of stuff with the border itself. Now that the formatting is done on our drawing template, what we want to do is we want to go up to the top and click save. And like I previously stated, we want to make sure that this file name at the top matches the file name of our template that we want to use. So 
everything looks good here. I've saved the template. I'll go ahead and save again just in case. And let's go ahead and exit out of this file so we can see what happens when we launch a new drawing file. I'll go ahead and click close here in the top right hand corner. Now, if we go into this advanced folder and double click on custom template, I want you to notice what happens. So it's going to open this file. Now at the top, it says drawing five. So this is a basic new drawing file. Okay, so we're not currently editing the base template like we were before. And uh, I want you to pay attention to this down here. Look, we have our company logo, the company name, and that space we cleared out here at the bottom. Now, before I go ahead and wrap up this video, I want to discuss how we can use this drawing button here on the home screen within the basic section here in the top left hand corner to launch a new drawing file using our new custom template. So currently when we click on this, what it's going to do is it's going to open up that old standard template. We don't want that. So what we can do is we can go up to close and uh, let's go back into our file explorer within Windows and make a couple changes there so that we can make this happen. The first thing we need to do is go ahead and open that file explorer window that we were using earlier. And we need to overwrite the standard.dwg file with our custom template.dwg. So what I would recommend doing here is creating a folder. Um, it can be in here or it can be elsewhere. So I'm just going to jump up a level and I'm going to create a new folder called history. So um, we'll go ahead and do that. I'm just going to call it history. All right. Let's go back into our ENUS folder. Let's go ahead and cut and paste this into that new history folder. Okay, so we're going to preserve the original template. Let's go back to ENUS. Okay, so now what we can do is we can rename this custom template.dwg file as standard.dwg. Okay, so we're just going to call this standard.dwg, just like the original file was called. And uh, let's go ahead and close out of Inventor and reopen Inventor so that we can utilize this with that drawing button. So I'll just go ahead and open up Inventor. It'll take a second to load here. All right. And uh, as you can see here, we still have our um, advanced section here that we can go through and crawl through. But let's go ahead and click drawing here in the basic section. Now, remember before it used the wrong template, but now it uses the proper template. So we have a size C sheet with our new title block and our new border format. That's all for this segment of the Autodesk Inventor Drawing Creation Module, where I showed you how to create a custom drawing template. I really hope that you found this tutorial to be helpful and that you put what you've learned into practice so you can continue developing your skills as you work your way through these lessons. Also, before you watch the next video in the series, make sure you subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications to stay up to date on future content that will help you create the future you want for yourself. And of course, don't hesitate to leave a comment or reach out via my website contact page and let me know if there's anything else you'd like to learn about or see on this channel. I really appreciate you choosing to stop by and learn with me and I'll see you again soon.